as soon as I heard that, next yeah. Sunday. Right. Except for I'm holding me in trouble. Manny's a talker. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, like to introduce. Uh, <laughs> So good to see everybody. I, uh, man, ever since we started the USKMA about, I don't know, three years ago, I've always wanted to have at least a once a year big affiliate gathering and training and uh, let everybody meet everybody else. We've got so many good people. I do have some extra chairs against the wall there. We got some more here. I believe everyone I saw introducing yourselves to everyone else. Way, way cool to have you. Front row. He just said Tony Robbins said the most successful. <coughs> front row. Yeah, but I can see it. Where the people? Yeah, I would have filled up peer pressure. I'd sit in the back on pipes. Oh yeah, it's, 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 it's spread out at the end. Yeah, yeah. There's a few other people out there. Uh, several of these dudes just tested for black belt yesterday, and that, it, oh my God, it's impressive. <laughs> there was only like, a, I don't even think there's 90 black belts in the U.S. and Krav Maga. <laughs> even with anybody being able to call anything they teach crap my guy anymore. So and what they went through yesterday, very few people could get through. I couldn't have been happier. Very proud of that group. Awesome. This first lecture, basically I'm going to yap about the system, what exactly it is that we we do with the USKMA, um, the system we developed at Ohio Krav Maga, and which is so cool to me to see it's being implemented across the country and it's working everywhere. Um, The ones who are implementing, you know, the entire system, I see growing like crazy. And then I've got a few affiliates, um, probably the ones that are here, that add a little bit of it. And they still get a bump. It's just that uh, people think, you know, I see these karate gyms adding Krav Maga. They think that's like the magic. Oh, we've got Krav Maga, that'll bring people in. Not really. If you're the first one in your area to offer Krav Maga, you'll get the people that know what Krav Maga is and they were looking for it. But, man, you got to go out and earn people to come in um, just like any other, just like, you know, think of the... the budgets that LA Fitness and Gold's Gym, you know, they're advertising, they're getting people in. Um, they're going after people, which is what we try to teach teach our affiliates to do, go after people. We can't just expect them to come to us. Um, the history, we I had, I don't know, five or six different gyms, dojos over the years. Um, made a lot of mistakes and learned from every mistake I made. So that's okay if you make mistakes as long as you learn from them. Is that what you, Absolutely. Is that what you say, Manny? Absolutely. When I opened up Ohio Krav Maga Fitness in 07, July of 07, um, I told myself I'm going to run it like a business. I'm going to uh, learn from every mistake I made. I'm going to do things right. Um, and it took off like crazy. We at Ohio Krav Maga, Terry owns it now. We're up over 700 members mm -hmm. in three locations. Still sign about 45 to 50 every single month. Which is, which is amazing. And she's done that for over two years now. Every single month she signs that many. Probably one two years, huh? Because when, when you worked for me, you were signing that many. Um, we, we, we discovered how to get people in, how to keep them interested, exactly how to do the intros, exactly how to get the adults in. We don't make any claims at all about kids. We have maybe 100 kids out of that 700 and some, but we know how to get adults in. Um, I started getting random calls from people, you know, three and a half years ago. Hey, how are you guys doing that? How in the world are you, you heading? I don't know even where some of them heard about us. But I started thinking, you know what? I've been with some national organizations. I have a national caliber staff. I have a world-class staff, and we were going more more per year than any other gym I knew of, even the ones that were in the mega systems. And we got to where in Ohio, I can only think of maybe two two, play, two gyms in the United States that are bigger, Krav Maga gyms, and they've both been around for, good gosh, 15, 20 years. So that, that, that we were doing something right. So we decided, hey, let's start our own organization. And sure enough, I believe, uh, Tucson, Arizona, Jesse. Where's Je Jesse? They were my very first affiliate. I went in there and did instructor training and um, you know, showed them what we're doing in Ohio. And sure enough, as soon as they started implementing that stuff, they got a, a rise out of uh, uh, with their adults that they were signing. And I know Brandon, he was maybe my second, he was one of the first ones. Brandon, my, my head co-head co instructor in the USKMA now. He like doubled his adult enrollment in two or three weeks. He just, oh, wow. And then it was just so cool to see as we started implementing this and showing people how to do it, that it was it was working wherever. It wasn't just an Ohio thing. We're in some towns that have, you know, no one has jobs. They, they're way down. They're, the economy sucks. And they're still doing good. And then we have, you know, towns that are still doing okay. And they're, they're doing good. So basically everything, I, I, I tell you, I realize I'm very opinionated. Hey, this stuff works. Why aren't you doing it? But truly, I always tell my affiliates, it's your business. Do what you want. Um, 
you know, I've got people that have said, oh man, I really need to start a level two class, but I haven't been through official level two training. And other organizations would tell you, no, you cannot teach level two unless you've been through our training. And it's like, it's your business. Don't lose people because you ha can't send somebody to level two training yet. Do what you need to do. So as much as I, I, I'm real, yeah, it needs to be done this way. Do what you want. I'm a guy you're paying to give you ideas to make money. I'm not your boss. <laughs> That's the way I've always looked at it. I've been to organizations where they thought they were my boss. It's like, you know what, I'm feeding my family with this. You know, I'm going to do what I need to do. But truly, after telling you that you know, I'm just a guy you're paying for money ideas, uh, now I'm going to tell you, hey, here's how you should be doing it. <laughs> my thought is, uh, I don't have my whiteboard. If I had a pie chart that represents everybody in your community, say your city's 200,000, mainly people that take crop and do what we're doing are going to be mm, 16 to 35 year olds. So out of that 200,000, what, we maybe make a slice here? That's who you're going after. That's, we're down to what, 50,000? Is that the math? We're down to 50,000. Take half of those away. They're fat, they wouldn't exercise, they, they could care less, they smoke, they're slobs. They're not going to come and do anything uh, for you. Um, they're just not interested. So that, we're down to 25,000. My thought is, why make that slice any smaller? You know, the reason that we do things in t-shirts and shorts and tennis shoes and we play, you know, the music that we play and we have fun and there's no bowing, there's no calling the show, <coughs> is because that starts to shrink that 25,000 down more and more and more. For instance, if we had martial arts uniforms, adults, most adults, the ma vast majority, they're not looking for martial arts. They are running away from martial arts. So as soon as you tell that, that female that wants to learn self-defense that she has to wear those pajamas with that belt, they're not coming. You're slicing that down to, <laughs> now you're only after 3,000 people in your community. Let's keep it after the 25,000 people. Let's make it as easy um, as we can make it to get people in there. And basically, we're not competing against martial arts schools. We're competing against LA Fitness and Gold's Gym. We're competing against um, the people that know what they're doing. What do they do? They've got a small place that they pack tens of thousands of people. They have tens of thousands of members. They are all about getting members in the door. They don't care if they show up after they get them in there. They hope they don't. And they've got some major high overhead with all that equipment. But we're competing against that group. So the entire system... And again, this is preaching to the choir. I know you guys have embraced this and you're running with it. Um, get them in the door. Advertising, advertising. Um, you know, I get people all the time, oh, I don't have the money to advertise. Well, you never will have the money to advertise unless you're advertising and get people in there. Yes, word of mouth is awesome. And when you hit a certain number, I mean, it just rolls on itself. They bring their friends and my gosh, it just, you just grow like crazy. But the reason we're signing 50 a month in, in Ohio is because uh, the word of mouth, we're awesome. But we also advertise. Our budgets, you know, a percentage of whatever's coming in is budgeted. Um, and advertising, yeah, there's a lot of free stuff that you can do. Craigslist and all that kind of stuff. It's in the, on the affiliate page, kind of ideas with that. Snipe signs are cheap. I know one's kicking butt with snipe signs. And then I know some towns, truly, after 10 minutes you put it in the ground, the dudes come and rip them up. And then they gripe at you. Um, but do that stuff. When I first opened my first gym, and I mean, we weren't even paying the rent. It, it was it was uh, kind of scary. My first crop gym when we started in 07. I think we took the gym over and it had maybe 70 members and that wasn't enough to pay the rent. We, um, I for six weeks went out every day and put flyers in mailbox flags for hours every day. I handed out, it was over 10,000 of them. You know what? I didn't sit around hoping people would come and find me. I did something every day to get people in there. And I didn't have any money, but that was cheap. I, ran, I made flyers and I put them in mailbox flags. Um, whatever you think of, go to businesses, do demos at wherever you can do a demo in front of whatever group you can get in front of. Um, it just it just slays me uh, when people gripe that they're not growing and well, what are you doing? Nothing. <laughs> well, then no kidding, you're not growing. You got to go out and earn it. Now, when you can budget it, and again, truly as quick as you can, advertising. And you guys know our, our thoughts on that. I've truly over the years, I've been teaching since '87. Had my own gym since 91. Martial arts gyms, we, I ran those for years. And then it was uh, about 99 I started Krav. So we, we've done every ever, everything. On the backs of shopping carts, the movie theater, when the, you know they have the before the movie, so we've done everything. The only thing I've ever found that, that's worth the money are billboards and TV. Truly, that's all, about all we do. Pretty much for the most part still, isn't it? Um, Billboards, I know some cities you can't touch them, but some that can. Allen in Albany, New York runs a two or three billboards a month, and he just, he's really good at tracking it. He's, they just kick butt for him. 
Um, the TV ads are cheaper than you think. I've ran them for as little as $4 a run, but you always try to run them during the Ultimate Fighter. That's about $150, $180 a run during the Ultimate Fighter. It seems like that's what it was. Um, I don't know. If we had a $2,000 budget for advertising in a month and I signed two people for a year contract, that paid for it. And we signed way more than two because of those things. Uh, the other big thing is your website to get people in the door. It's got one job, to get people to call you to set an intro or to set an intro online if, you, if you've got that set up. Uh, you don't put prices on there, you don't show pictures of people kicking people in the groin, you don't show any martial art uniforms. You guys, are, again, preaching to the choir. I've, I've seen most of your websites, you do a very good job. If you've got a big kids program, have two websites, one for the kids, one for the adults. Okay, the moms looking for the kids stuff don't want to see this crop stuff with the adults smacking each other. And if you're an adult looking for crop, you don't want to see the freaking kids running around in a uniform on a website. So absolutely, uh, everything's geared towards getting them to set an intro. There's no prices. Uh, hopefully we know that. There's only the uh, intro. Um, marketing person. I hope you guys find the Terry. <laughs> she was just freaking awesome. You pay somebody to answer the phones, answer the emails. The gym phone was forwarded to her cell. Anytime somebody called, she talked to them. They were always shocked. They're so used to leaving voicemails. Um, she's there on intro night. She greets them, gets them to do their paperwork, takes them to tour, introduces them to the instructor, uh, talks to them after the intro about signing up, and then she follows up with them. At whether they did or didn't sign up, she still follows up with them. Now, I know a lot of people, you're a one-man show, and like, oh, I don't have the money for that. The cool thing is, yeah, you do have the money for that because it pays for itself. I think um, I gave... Terry a base pay, but also basically she made her money on every intro that came in, she made $10, and we charged them $19 for the intro. Everyone she signed, she made $50, and we, signed a, and we charged them a $59 sign-up fee. So truly, I loved giving her big checks, because that meant that she signed a heck of a lot of people. So absolutely, um, ease into that. If you find somebody you think is going to work, tell them it's temporary, it's a month, and see how they do. You don't want to be stuck with somebody you have to fire that isn't doing a good job. But absolutely... Um, Think again how old Gold's Gym grows like they grow. Uh, they've got a marketing person. They've got a marketing staff. <laughs> you know what? This, is, this isn't this is martial art gym where people are going to come and find you. This is I've got a marketing person that I'm paying to go bring people in. And she was the one that looked for the where we could do demos and what events and what parades we could be. And she was the one that did all that stuff for us because she knew the harder she worked at, the more she was going to get to sign up. And again, I hope, I hope you all find a Terry. But go at it slowly. Hire someone for temporary and then get it rolling. <laughs> and no, Terry doesn't have the time to do anything for you. She, she run her own place. Now uh, the intro. I think most of you are doing the intro the, the way we recommend. I mean, when we did instructor training, I gave you the entire script, exactly how we do an intro. Uh, whether I did it at my gym or whether one of my other 30 instructors did an intro at the gym, I knew it was pretty much identical. We were doing the same thing. Um, they got one option and one option only. There's no, can I try a free class? No. You can't. There's no free week. There's no $20 for two weeks. There is $19 for a t-shirt, an intro, and a class all on the same night. Okay, they come to the intro, and again, the intro, we're showing them some basics so that when they get into the, the class, they're not lost, because feeling lost in the class doesn't equal, I like this and I'm signing up. But it's also selling. The things we say are telling them, hey, how great it is for you, big guy. This is awesome for you. You, small girl, this is just built for you. This is crop is awesome. You're going to have fun. You're going to have a great workout. Now, we don't want them to do the intro and then coming back for the class on another day because we just told them what a workout the class is. The intro isn't much of a workout. We don't want them to leave that intro thing. Well, that wasn't much. We want them to stay. There's a 10-minute break, and now the class starts. Bam. If we've got our, our, our A instructor and our A game on, we just went through a, a great intro, a great class. That's when we talked to them about signing up. That night, they're never more ready. They are never going to be more ready. They're usually shaking and out of, I loved it, it was great, it was great. Um, that's the time. Now we're not high pressure salesmen. We do offer them, hey, we'll take your, sign, your intro fee off of the sign up fee. We give them some gear, I think some wrist wraps and stuff, if you sign tonight. But we don't do that. Let's overcome the objective and say, oh, i got to check with my wife. You know, the hardcore salesman will say, oh, your wife doesn't want you to get in shape? Oh, you got to check with your wife on everything? We don't do that. She'll actually tell them, I'll tell you what. If you come back within the next three or four days, come back by Wednesday, uh, I'll still give you that deal, the 19 off and the wrist wraps and all that stuff. We probably get more than half of our signups that don't sign that night, but they come back within that week. That's just, they appreciate that we're not high pressure. I hate high pressure. I walk away from things even if I really want it. If, if it's a high pressure salesman or ask for someone else, I've done that before and their jaws drop. Um, we sell a product that they're going to want. We don't need to talk them into it. 
And if you talk people into it, and then they feel stuck, and oh my gosh, it's hundred dollars a month, and I'm stuck because, you know, just we're, we're be good people. We're not ego maniacs. We don't we don't high pressure people. Um, the class we all know follows the template: seven or eight minutes warm up, fifteen to twenty minutes on the combata, fifteen to twenty minutes on the crop technique, run a drill, <laughs> keep them moving, quit talking. Martial art instructors, quit talking. Work them, work them, work them. They will get it down. Okay, by the time they test, <laughs> Manny, by the time they test, they'll have seen it 50 times. They're not going to test until they're good at it. <laughs> He's making faces at me. Mm -hmm. um, it's a workout. We tell them they're going to lose weight, they're going to get in shape. This is the, such a fun workout. Uh, make sure that you're delivered on that. I don't have to, to have them learn every aspect to a headlock defense today. I need to, A, get them a workout, but B, you're also instilling those techniques don't save anyone's ass. Building them into fighters that are going to go, 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 that's what saves people's ass in the real world. You know, we're teaching great techniques, but man, if you don't emphasize the philosophy over the technique, um, you're not doing them a favor. We need to develop people that have a switch that they can go off and go hard and go forward, and I'm not stopping until this guy's unconscious and a puddle of goo on the ground. Um, that's why everything we do in class is built that way. And again, preaching to the choir, you guys all teach awesome classes. That's why outside defense, if it says outside defense on the lesson plan, it's not outside defense and let's do a bunch of reps there. Okay, let's move on to the next thing. We throw two or three outside defenses, then it's an outside defense and four punches, then it's an outside defense and six punches, then it's an outside defense, six punches, grab them, knee them, throw them on the ground. We spend most of our time at the end with that entire combination than we do at the beginning. Because I don't give a shit if they learn the outside defense perfectly. I give a shit if they're going to, I know I need to destroy. Under stress, if all we've done is single techniques, I'll block and I'll stand there because that's how I train. If I train by going berserk and beating somebody in the ground, that's going to come out of me. So, you know, reasons we do everything is A, it's the best self-defense we can teach, and B, it gets people signed up and gets them in the door. It has to, it has to match both of those. We won't just do one or the other. Da, 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 da. What you offer at your gym? Having martial arts classes and a crowd class is cool. <clears throat> But you're not really competing against Gold's Gym and, and LA Fitness and all them unless you're offering fitness classes. The CrossFit, uh, or the CrawFit or whatever we're going to call it, Terry's going to do that tomorrow. The Cardio MMA, which Juan's doing this, this morning yet. Um, we've got an A MMA class, A Boxing class, A BJJ class. Now we're not a BJJ school, but by golly, all these extra things um, are fitness. Uh, people can come to like three things a night. They'll come to a crop and then stay for a CrossFit and then a cardio MMA. They'll, they'll hit all those. Um, we're offering things to get them in shape, which they would be doing at Gold's Gym, but we're fun. We're fun and we care about you. It's like a personal trainer because our staff um, cares so much about you and talks, talks with you and really gives you individual attention. Um, schedules, try to have something every night. We're to where each of our gym has three different things every single night that a brand new person can come to. If you join LA Fitness, they don't tell you you can come Tuesday and Thursday at 6, that's it. Come when you can. So that's what we try to do. We've got it every weeknight and Saturday morning. They can come to level one. There's a cardio MMA. There's a CrossFit. There's, there's things they can come to every single night that fits their schedule. We kind of take that excuse away from them. Like, oh, that doesn't fit my schedule. Hey, we got stuff so often. We got day classes. We got morning classes at a couple of them. Mm -hmm. I thought so. <laughs> And uh, offer it all for one price. We don't do add-ons. People appreciate that we don't do add-ons. When Terry used to try to, you know, get them to sign, and she'd show them everything they could do for one price, they were always like, "Really? I can do all that for one price?" So it's not just crowd. It's the CrossFit. It's everything. Um, people like this. They they appreciate that. You're not trying to rook them. And oh, I've got this other for my special people that are paying fifty dollars more a month. They can do these other things. It's like no, one price, everything. That's why we have so many members. Um, the, the kids pro gurus, they'll usually tell you, be the most expensive place in town. Look, look like, you know, the Rolls Royce. Uh, this, that whole philosophy kind of pisses me off. But we've got a jam-packed 50 people in this room working out. When I've got intros that look in there, they're thinking, they must know what they're doing. This is, looks awesome. Look at all these people. If I was charging three times as much and had 10 people in there, that doesn't look so cool. I'd rather have a lot of people love me, paying a little bit, than really just chins and people and, and, and trying to be sky high. We're $96 a month on a 12 month contract, $94 a month on a 12 month contract, like 130 something for a month a month. We offer a month a month, but we want them to pay so much more for it that they'll, they'll gear themselves to the to the, the 12 months, but uh, pretty much all we offer, month a month, 12 month. Try to keep it right under $100, because again, we're competing with Gold's Gym and them who charge what, $29 a month? So how can we justify charging three times 
three times that amount, um, and they've got millions of dollars worth of equipment, and I've got a garage. It's because of they're learning cool stuff, they're having fun, uh, they're getting personal attention. You know, they see the value in it. They got to see the value. It's t-shirts, shorts. We got Ozzy playing. We're just. It doesn't look like a martial art. Don't look like a martial art. Adults are running from martial arts. <coughs> Um, the look of your gym, I know some of you have really big kids programs and you can't hardly help but to have, you know, your kids posters and all that stuff around, but the room you're doing crab in, have it look crabbish. Our whole gym, we've got MMA, UFC posters, we've got CrossFit posters, you know, it doesn't have a bunch of nunchucks hanging on the wall and the little <laughs> sayings. What's one of the sayings you post every day? Oh, I'm brain dead. That stuff. <laughs> I'm brain dead. That stuff is absolutely what a kids. That's what a kids program should have. But I don't want, I don't want my crowd class to look like this is a kids gym, but we also have a crowd class. I want it to look like, hey, this place is cool. Again, if you're making most of your money from the kids class, do that. But just have your crowd room maybe look a little, a little more adultish. Um, if you're a crowd gym looking for adults, make your gym look not hardcore, but not kitty, mm -hmm. not kitty stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, instructors, I know you guys send them through our instructor training, and we, we that's that's where we're ahead of the game. I mean, LA Fitness has what? Tybo and that kind of stuff. They got a girl that went to a two-day seminar who's never done martial arts or anything like that in her life teaching it. And when I look in there and see their skills, it's like, ooh, that's scary. We've got, you know, probably got black belts, people that have been in this stuff for years and years and years, uh, people that know what the heck they're doing. So, uh... You know, again, this is how we justify charging so much more than Gold's Gym. I can do all this at Gold's Gym. It's the experience, man. You can't beat this. We have fun. We're, we're learning stuff that you can save your family's lives with. Um, it's kind of cool how, how you can charge so much more for basically the same stuff. But, man, what we're doing is so much fun. So much fun. We care about them. They know we want them to be there rather than the opposite. We don't want them to be there. And we can do all this without having all that equipment. Matter of fact... You don't want equipment in your in your gyms. I think uh, we've got CrossFit equipment, of course, but I think once someone put a treadmill in our gym, and once someone brought a, a bench in our gym, and I said, no, get those out of here. <laughs> as soon as I start looking like I want to compete with those guys with all that equipment they have, we pale in comparison. They got millions of dollars of the newest, best equipment, and I got a couple of benches and stuff. It's like, let's just not even look that way. We're hardcore. We've got CrossFit, you know, kettlebells and that kind of stuff. Just, uh... We're competing against them, but don't start to try to look like them. We don't need the fancy locker rooms and all the showers and all the millions of dollars worth of equipment. We like the bare bones look. You know, what's the back of our t-shirts say? No spandex, no flexing, no mirrors, no... It's like we, we embrace the hardcore look. So truly, if you've got workout equipment in your gym, um, to me, it looks like now you're trying to really be the same as the guys that they can go to much nicer equipment for a third of the price. So, so don't even do that. Questions at all in the system? That was kind of down and dirty and quick and, and uh, preaching to the choir, if you guys know this stuff. But truly, everything that we do that, that works for us in Ohio that keeps her signing almost 50 people every single month, 50 adults, I pass on to you guys. There's n we have no secrets. Um, the new monthly thing that I'm doing, that courtesy of Manny, he told me, hey, you should do something like this, and it's working well with the, the technique of the month, the drill of the month, and all that stuff. I mean, it's just... Uh, I know we're all keeping kind of on the same page. You know, we're teaching good crop. We're teaching it the way that adults like it. We're all signing people, um, and I, I couldn't be happier. This is just—it's—it's it's grown beyond my wildest expectations. And you know, I get at least four or five gym owners. Uh, well, yeah, I should say at least three gym owners every single week emailing me wanting information. I mean, I can see this um, the U.S. CAMA just growing and growing and growing. I mean, my next goal is 50, and after that, the goal is 100, and we're approaching it. Uh, but I certainly want to continue to be just as customer oriented and make sure people think I'm getting a deal for what I'm being charged rather than, you know, other organizations I've been with where they wouldn't even answer emails and you're giving them a lot of money every month. Questions at all? Mm -hmm. so how do you, um, what is the retention rate and how do you address the excuses that come up? Do you offer like a freeze for memberships? I think during, if they signed up for 12 months, we give them a, one freeze in that 12 month if they have something. Yeah, to, they can, uh, in a 12 month agreement, you can freeze for up to two months for any reason. Um, and uh, month to month, there's, you know, we offer them a freeze also, but they're within the right to cancel on month if they want. Now, month to month, when they cancel, they got to give us a 30-day notice, so we do get one more payment out of them. And no one's going to cancel in the first two or three months, so generally you make almost as much if they stay for five or six months. Our retention's not terrible. No. I mean, we don't. I bet we don't lose 
twenty. Yeah, which mm-hmm. sounds like maybe a lot, but when you got seven, eight hundred people, that's what two percent. That's yeah. it's not much. And we do even with a month to month. Three and five percent. Between three and five percent. Mm-hmm. Terry, what percent of your people do fraud? Um, you know, I don't have hard numbers on that. I'm going to say it's probably. 60 to 70 percent. Oh, I know we used to, it used to be we'd get 50 calls for crop for every one we'd get for CrossFit or one of the other fitness things we do. That's starting to kind of change. She gets it's like she says 60 or 70. With, with the increased popularity in CrossFit, um, we also have, especially in um, in two of our locations, it's kind of a, a family atmosphere, and we have a lot of people who love just coming for the cardio MMA and the the yoga and the boxing and they you know they never even look at CrossFit or Krav Maga to be honest with you. Um, <coughs> cool, but not it's still only, the highest percentage. From yeah, the, and the cool thing is not only do we have all that to offer, but think if you just had Krav and I'm getting kind of tired of Krav, I'm leaving. Now I'm getting kind of, we've had this a lot. People that started for Krav got kind of tired of went to CrossFit and they've been in that for a year. So it's like you got all this stuff to kind of shovel into. Did I answer your question completely? It, in a roundabout way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think our attention is good just because uh, it's the individual attention. We call them by name. We talk to everybody that walks in. We got at least at a couple places. We got somebody sitting at the desk that greets them as they come in. Um, we just we we never had a real hard, bad time with retention. And the cool thing is, you look at your numbers, and if suddenly you've got a month or two where it is going down, you go fix what it is. We know which of our gyms it is. Hey, I got to get in there and look at those classes. And the cool thing is, we got an intro. If we're signing. You know, each gym signing 15 intros a month, all of a sudden this gym only signed five. I know i got to get in there with that instructor and show them, hey, let's make sure we're doing these intros correctly. If, when you keep an eye on your numbers and, and you're worried about retention, you know, you, you can certainly um, go fix things that need fixed as long as you are keeping an eye on the numbers and know what's, what's happening at each of your gyms. The system, kind of back to when I was talking about the history of it, it, it was in place and I had three gyms and I moved to another state and the th- place kept growing like crazy. That's kind of when I knew, hey, we've got a system. You know, Terry oversaw all three gyms. I had a manager at each gym. For two years, I lived in another state and the things kept growing like crazy. That's when we started, you know, really deciding, hey, let's put this all across the nation. I just have a question for clarity's sake um, about the freeze that you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Just so I understand the, 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 the process that you use. When you say freeze, do you mean the person doesn't make a payment? Yeah. Yeah, we don't do that. Yeah, they, I know a lot of people, freeze they'll freeze. make their payment and that freeze gives them two months in at the end. That's though. how we do it. We don't ever stop the payments because they stop getting used to making that payment. It's very hard for them to go back to making that payment. We have done it that way. A lot of times it's people, they need that freeze because they're hurting for money. Well, I mean, that's, we just, I mean, that's, yeah, that's, that's Yeah, you find that out. I guess. That's different yeah. than, than I'm having a baby or... Yeah. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. question. Um, like, if you offer all that different stuff now, do you have an intro for each of the different programs, or you do just do we the one We used to. Intro? They run through the CROV intro, whatever you're joining, but they have changed that. If somebody's just wanting CrossFit, you've we got a CrossFit have, we intro. We have a bunch of different options. You can, right now on my website, you can register for a CROV Maga intro, a CrossFit intro, or a Cardio MMA intro. And um, we also recently added, um, because CrossFit, is such a different animal. Um, an intro, a one class intro doesn't necessarily cover it, so we actually just added a four week CrossFit on ramp, um, mm-hmm. which is actually, it ramps people up into actually understanding CrossFit, and we've had huge success with that already. But yeah, um, if people come to a Krav Maga intro though, and then ask me if they're interested in Cardio MMA, do I have to do another intro? I usually tell them no, you don't have to, um, because the Krav Maga intro covers pretty much everything you're going to learn in Cardio MMA also. But having the option for a Cardio MMA <coughs> intro allows the person who is maybe a little bit intimidated by Krav Maga to say, yeah, I'd love to come try that, it's just me in a heavy bag. It also, we've had this um, experience a lot recently, um, and you'll find this with Groupon customers in particular, I feel like. Um, Krav Maga, they come to a Krav Maga intro and it was really overwhelming. They don't like big dudes sweating on them. They don't like small girls sweating on them. They just don't want to touch people. I don't know what they thought they were coming to, but Krav Maga is not for them. Um, So when they call up and they say, I really was not comfortable in that class. Is there anything else you can recommend? Um, I say, yeah, come try a cardio MMA intro instead. It's just you and a heavy bag. Yours is the only sweat on you, you know, that kind of stuff. 
Plus, you've got Scott Howard next to you flinging it everywhere. Yeah. So that's, <laughs> it's a, our Crown Maga intros are still our biggest ones. They're the ones that have the majority of the enrollment. Um, but we do have those other options on the calendar just to get somebody in the door. So how does how does the CrossFit intro phase work? Like, right that's now, something we that still have both options. You can do a CrossFit intro, which is um, you come on a... CrossFit coaches scheduled to be in the class um, and so you sign up to come on a regular CrossFit class night but there's an additional coach there who helps you um, helps the beginners work through the stuff and helps them understand how to scale it and things like that they come to one class they participate with the rest of the group for the most part and then depending on what the wad is that night the workout is that night we may separate them off and say all right intros it's your first night you're going to do 10 to 1 wall balls and burpees everybody else you're going to come over here and do double unders and snatches or whatever it is um so that's one way what we found was most people who come to that they really liked it they liked that they got the additional um one-on-one -on -one attention but that's one class and then they were going how am I going to know when I'm ready to do what those guys are doing? And how am I going to, do I have to keep coming to this Tuesday night class because it's the only one where there's an extra coach to help me? So now we do an on-ramp. It's separate. It's a separate fee. It's eight classes. It's only beginners. You have to register ahead of time for the whole thing. Um, and they can, they, there's a set lesson plan that goes through all eight classes and they learn all the basics of what a CrossFit class looks like, what the movements are, what the language sounds like, that kind of stuff. CrossFit's a different animal. Completely different Which is animal. why this weekend we're seeing CrossFit and Cardio MMA. I certainly mm -hmm. recommend doing both. CrossFit's intimidating to a lot of people. Um, to me, I was going to get a lot more females joining for the Cardio MMA because it's basically, you know, we tell them it's Tybo on crack. Yeah, it <laughs> it's is. Just, it's, and the guys like it because it's fight training, man. We're doing five, three five, minute minute rounds. Five, five minute rounds. Yeah, the girls are there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the girls are there, so the guys are coming. But certainly, yeah, I absolutely recommend both. Um, and I'll change, a different animal. The I'll ones that love it, love it, and the ones that don't aren't ever going to look, look yep. at it twice. The honor of helps with that a lot, having That's a less intimidating environment to, to introduce CrossFit. But I'll change, back to Cardio MMA for a second, I'll change my language when I'm talking to customers based on kind of, you get, you get a feel for um, what they're looking for. And, um, you know, probably almost everybody in this room, I would describe cardio MMA to you if you were an intro as five five minute rounds of fight conditioning. But I would get, you know, a stay at home mom who looks a little nervous about coming in and I'm going to tell her it's five five minute rounds. It's just you and a heavy bag. It's kind of like a cardio kickboxing class. It's the same class. You guys get the same experience out of it. But I'm going to tell you it's a fight conditioning class. I'm going to tell her it's a cardio kickboxing class. Anything else? <laughs> Sorry, that was a preview of what you will experience with Juan later today. <laughs> Take uh, five minutes, and then we've got a, a great presentation on, again, getting more people in the door from, from Manny. Take five. I know you just sat there and listened to me for a while. <laughs>